My mailman's buying a rental property. Denny, this is your show. Let's dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey, folks, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show here on Holton Wise TV. As always, folks, I am your host, James Wise, and this show, this show on Holton Wise TV, Holton Wise TV is all about providing transparency, but this show, transparency into the real estate industry, but this show, this show is where you actually work with us one on one. We work with our viewers, our investors out there one on one to build real life rental portfolios. We are a real real estate brokerage. We are real real estate investors, property managers. We have real insurance companies. We have real title companies. So it's not just theory. It is actually theory and real life practice, real life deals. And we do deals with investors from all around the world. We've got investors from as far away as Singapore, but today's show, we didn't go far at all. We went with my man, Denny, uh, who is a local bar owner and mailman. He's not actually uh, my mailman. I don't live in the suburb that he does, but uh, he's a local cat. And, uh, you know, he's an entrepreneur, right? He's got his day job, his W-2 income uh, as a mailman, and he's building himself something big for retirement, right? He's already bought a bar. He owns that bar that's giving him, you know, semi-passive income, right? He doesn't have to be there all the time. He doesn't have to fill up the beers. Uh, he doesn't have to pour shots, things of that nature. He's got employees doing that, right? That's what businesses are. They're not 100% passive. There's still work that needs to be done, but you could, you know, sub out that work. You could pay that work. You could pay employees for their time. And real estate is another great passive investment, even more passive than the bar industry, because Denny could still go out and work his nine to five, still earn W-2 income so he could then invest that income in rentals, which is why I love this business. You don't have to quit your job to start it. You could do it on the side. Denny sounds like a hustler, Fucking good job out of you, Denny. That's badass that you are doing the mailman thing, owning a bar, and getting into rentals. When I was first getting into this business, I was working all types of jobs, right? I was working jobs. I didn't quit all my jobs till this business really took off, right? You know, I bought my first property while I was running a freaking Radio Shack, right? So you don't need to be a rich guy to invest in real estate. You just need to be a hard worker who's willing to uh, just, you know, spin more plates, right? Keep your job and then spin some more plates and slowly build it up. So good job out of Denny. I already like this cat because he is a blue collar dude. Blue collar strong. Anybody out there who's watching today's show who's blue collar, let me know in the comments. I want to know what you do. What do you do for your day job? What do you do for your day job right now? And what was your day job when you bought your first property? Like I said myself, managing a fucking Radio Shack. That job, whew, it was all right. But, you know, you ain't seen no Radio Shacks around here anymore, right? So I made the right decision. Am I right? But the first property. And I've got for you, Denny. Denny, you bought, uh, I think it was like a four-pack, so we're going to be doing several videos together, but this is the first one. 3499 West 99th Cleveland, 44102. Been on the market forever, and we're going to talk about that. 301 days, list price $66,500. Now, this is a tenant-occupied property, and there are some negatives that come with a tenant-occupied property. If the right buyer isn't hooked up with the right agent and the right seller isn't hooked up with the right agent, okay? Like, this has been on the market not because it's priced terribly, because it's not. It's it's actually priced fairly well. But the uh, the marketing, right, the, the, the experience, the, the marketing package, what they're presenting to the general public is a problem, okay? We got two photos. This one... And that one, both, uh, you know, he sh the agent stood in the front yard and he snapped his photo and then he, he moseyed over here and he snapped this photo, right? That's all he did, okay? And, and what that does, right, that, that doesn't show people a lot of information. And then you couple that with the fact that a lot of people, 
that they try to buy rentals, man. They they think about buying rentals as uh, how they bought their first house, right? Like most people that buy rentals, the first time they ever bought a house, they bought a house to live in it, and then the next step would be to buy rentals. Anybody who's trying to buy rentals before living in your own home, buying your own home that you live in, rather, uh, I don't recommend that. I think you should always take care of home base first, guys. I think if you're going to pay a mortgage, because you're going to pay a mortgage for a roof over your head, right? If you got a roof over your head, somebody is paying a mortgage. Do you want that mortgage to be your own mortgage or do you want it to be your landlord's mortgage? I don't know about you, but if I got a roof over my head I got to pay the mortgage on, I'd rather pay my own mortgage than my mailman Denny's mortgage. You know what I'm saying? So, sue me. Everybody out there is trying to buy rentals like this. They've already gone through the home buying process at least once with their own home. They're thinking the rental property buying process is going to be the same, right? You see the house online. You look at the pictures. You, you see if you like what it looks like. Well, here we don't have a bunch of pictures to see if I like what it looks like. I'm already not as interested. But for the people that are still interested, they move on to step two which is they contact their real estate agent and they go tour the house to see if they like the house, see if they like how it looks. We can't do that here, okay? Because we got a tenant in there, right? It's already tough to get inside a tenant occupied properties. It makes no goddamn sense. The reason that Holton Wise is the number one seller of rentals in the Cleveland market is because we have spent years developing a fully online, fully virtual way to buy and sell investment properties. I have a, a video in the show notes below that explains our buying process and how we do not do any buyer showings on occupied properties because it just doesn't make sense. It's not efficient. And that was pre-COVID, okay? Now that COVID hit, everybody else out there who hasn't like spent years, because we're ahead of the curve, right? I've, I've been working on this process since we got started in this business. I've been trying to get to this virtual Buying and selling. I, you know, I, I feel like showing rental properties after I've done so many deals. I'm like, that makes no fucking sense. That's the cog in the line, right? How do we give people transparency without this wasteful bullshit? So my team, we've been spending money and infrastructure trying to build that process, and we've, we've done it. We've accomplished it well before COVID, and that video explains how we do it. That's why we're the number one seller of rentals, because that is the best way to do it, right? But... The majority of agents out here, they don't do rentals, right? The majority of real estate agents, they do owner-occupied stuff. So the seller's agent, he's used to that normal process. You look at the photos, you like them. You move on to step two, you go inside the house, you see if you like it. Buyer's agent, same thing, because that's what they're thinking, right? That's how they normally do real estate. We do it totally different. We don't work with owner-occupied buyers and sellers. We only deal with investors, okay? So we are one company. There's over 5,000 realtors in, in, the, in the area, right? So the majority of people are thinking that way. And we can't go look at this property because COVID's happening right now and these tenants don't want to be bothered. And we got no pictures, probably because the tenants didn't want to be bothered by the people coming to take them, right? So because of that, a lot of people are thinking, oh man, this, there must be something they're hiding with this property. I don't think that's the case. But that, Denny, is why it's been on the market for 301 days. But let's dig a little deeper, dog. It's a three-bed, one-bath, and it's currently rented to a Section 8 tenant for $831 a month, $9,972. Now, people that are not familiar with Section 8, one thing you need to know is every single year, Section 8's going to come into that property, and they're going to inspect it. And the tenants, <laughs> they can't not let Section 8 do the inspection because Section 8 will just uh, pull them from the program, and then the tenants are going to get evicted, right? So uh, that is something they have to adhere to. Section 8's going to inspect these properties every single year, and they cite some ticky-tack stuff, cosmetic stuff. So what that can tell us is we have a very reasonable expectation that this home is in solid working order. Now, we're not going to go in blind. We're still, when we make an offer, we're going to make a contingent on inspection. We're not fucking crazy or anything like that, bro. But reasonably speaking, very good chance the home is structurally sound. No major issues. Cosmetically, I'm sure it don't look good. I mean, that doesn't really matter to me, though, right? Because you got Section 8 tenants paint, 831, bro. It does not matter what this house looks like cosmetically because there is no scenario where when these folks move out of this house, we're just like, sweet, Denny, the tenants moved out. 
I threw a fucking air freshener in there and my guy hit the vacuum. We're going to rent it again. That's not, that's not how this game works, dog. This is C-class rental property investing. There is going to be a turnover renovation here, okay? Uh, they've apparently been there for a decent chunk of time. So you're going to be spending some money uh, redoing the carpet, right? If there's carpet, we're going to be pulling that carpet. If there's hardwoods, we're going to expose those, refinish them so you don't have to do that in the future. Keep your turnovers lower going forward. Uh, so we're going to address the floor in some way. If they already did that, great. That's a little bit less money out of your pocket. We're going to probably repaint the entire place. And if the kitchen and the bath have old fixtures, we're going to replace them, give them new ones. When we do all that, though, the rent's actually going to go up. should be $1,000 a month in rent, right? The tenants right now, they're paying eight thirty one, And let's break that down. Of the eight thirty one, okay, what comes out of that? On average, I anticipate you spending 452 to operate it to have Holton Wise operate it for you. So that's going to leave you with an NOI of 379.45 hundo a year. Now, if we pick it up at the price I want to pick it up, which is only 55,000, they got it listed for 66.5. I think we can get it for you for 55, 11,000 dollar discount because of all the things I've been talking about during the show. So if we could pick it up at 55,000. We'll get you a loan. You're already pre-approved for 75 Gs, so there you go. You're good to go. You only need to put down 13750 with the money I anticipate you making. That's an 18% return on your money today, even though the rent's only 831 but the market rent for this brother is actually 1000 Now, here's the thing. You're like, okay, well, the market rent's 1000 Why the hell is Section 8 only paying 831 I watched a lot of your shows, James. Uh, you talk about how Section 8 typically pays the highest premium. That's very true, brother. They do. Uh, normally, when we have a house like this, we go through a Section 8 program. We get a rental uh, offer of around 1000 The way the Section 8 program works, and if you go to HoltonWise.com, on our fact, we have a whole fact dedicated to the Section 8 program, okay? The way it works, though, is every single property they go out, they give us an independent rental offer. So sometimes it's 1000 sometimes it'll be more, sometimes it'll be less, but that's going to vary. But the, the difference isn't going to be like 1000 to 831 There's an issue here, right? Why is it 831 Well, it's very possible that this particular tenant didn't have a three-bedroom voucher. It's very possible that when the landlord rented it to this tenant, maybe this tenant only had a two-bedroom voucher, right? Maybe it's a, a mom with one child. You're only going to get a two-bedroom voucher for that. You need to have two children to get a three-bedroom voucher. The three-bedroom vouchers are going to pay more than two-bedroom vouchers, but perhaps the landlord, like that tenant, wanted to rent it to that tenant. That is one scenario. A second scenario is perhaps the landlord wasn't advertising it enough, right? If the landlord is advertising the property at X, okay, Section 8, they do their rental evaluation, they're not going to offer you more than what, than what you're, you're asking for, right? So if you were advertising it at 1000 and they went in there like, okay, three-bedroom voucher, yeah, we could, we could do nine ninety five for this property. Boom, good. They'll come in a little bit lower, but it's going to be all right. But if you're only asking eight they they're not going to be like, we'll give you 1000 bro. That's, that's not how it works. That's one option. So we got those two scenarios. Another scenario is the tenant been there a while. Very possible this tenant rented it a long time ago. And uh, Section 8 was paying less at that time, right? So any one of those three reasons are why the rent is 831 But, dude, trust me, you should see a rental amount of around 1000 bucks a month on the next time we get a tenant in there. We could also appeal to Section 8 to try to increase the rent. We could do that. Just so you know, that process is that's a son bitch process, man. That is not fucking fun. Uh, so that's the whole thing you need to understand with Section 8, bro. Uh, it's a bitch. Uh, that's why we got the FAC. That's why we charge a little bit more to manage your properties on Section 8. It's great for you because it's going to help you. You're a dude. You're busy, bro. You got the the mailman job. You got the bar. You don't got to fuck with the property management, right? That's what Holton Wise is here for. Let us do that for you. Uh, you don't got to fuck with all the bullshit going through, dealing with the housing authority, dealing with Section 8. We will do all that on your behalf. It's going to be a pretty good passive uh, investment for you. And I, I liked it at Section 8, too, because that makes it more passive for you because you're not going to have to be a guy wondering if that next rent check's coming in, man. It's, it's guaranteed by the government. But actually getting the people into the property or trying to adjust the rental rate, it's just like a ton of behind-the-scenes nonsense back and forth. It's a whole lot of bullshit. I've said this on many shows. If you ask five people who work for Section 8 the same question, you're going to get five different answers, dude. Uh, that's just the name of the game, but don't, don't worry about it. That's just going to be my team doing that work for you. But just, just know that uh, things don't happen quickly, okay? So if we make the process, we start the initiate the process to try to get the rental offer increased on this to get closer to market rent, you know, 
it's not going to be like my team is like, hey, Denny, it's Tuesday. Just so you know, we're trying to get the rent up at Section 8. And then like Thursday, we're like, hey, Denny, guess what? We did it. <laughs> it, it don't work like that, bro. It's going to be a few month process of a lot of back and forth. And uh, maybe we hit a brick wall. Maybe we don't. So I just want to make sure I'm transparent about that with you. But with all that said, it's 18% cash on cash return. If we can utilize the fact that the seller's kind of in a jam and it doesn't appear that uh, the listing agent is extremely uh, well-versed in the rental property game, I think with the lack of buyers out there, the lack of how this has been presented uh, in a more efficient manner, I think we could work that price way down, man. They've been on the market a long time. They're probably getting, uh, gun you know, they're probably getting tired. You know, they're getting, uh, you know, they're getting just tough, right? They're 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 ready to let it out there, man. So that's why I think we pit up at 55, and it's got some good meat on the bone. And then the last thing I wanted to talk to you about before we got out of here, bro, is you had asked me uh, if owning C-class properties was a good idea long term, right? The bar you uh, own, that's a very it's a high end neighborhood that you own that bar, and that's an A-class neighborhood. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming you probably live around that neighborhood, if I had to guess, right? So it's a little bit different, right? The C-class neighborhood here is a little bit different. I think, yes, I think these are good starter investments, yes, but I don't see a reason why uh, it's something that you'd want to just sell off. Uh, it, it's not like you're going to move on to A-class investments, right? You're not going to be buying rental properties, in the same neighborhood that your bar's in, okay? There's no market for that, right? That neighborhood, dude, that's like 95, 98% owner-occupied. The numbers just aren't going to work out, right? Because the market over there isn't driven by rental investors, by rental income, right? The market there is driven because people want to live there and they want to buy their house there, right? So there, there's no way you're going to be able to pencil out an investment in that neighborhood or a neighborhood like that uh, where you'll actually produce cash flow, where it'll be a good financial investment, right? Market totally driven by the owner-occupied people. This market, the lower income stuff, a little bit different, right? We could actually make some money here. So yeah, I think it's good long-term. I don't think it's something you want to... Uh, uses your beginning stepping stone and then just eliminate. What I like to see investors do is I think you should utilize your first 10 mortgages before you move on to something else, right? So mortgage one, I think should be your own personal home. Talked about that earlier. And then that leaves you at nine more mortgages. I think you should pick up nine residential properties, anything between a single family or a four unit because you can get those 30 year loans. You're uh, pre-approved for 75 Gs, so this right here is pretty much what you got to start with this nice single. But perhaps on the second or the third property, you wait till you've saved up uh, a little bit more money, um, and you could pick something up in the hundred thousand dollar range, right? We can get you a duplex, right? So whether you can get approved for a loan higher than 75, or you just put down more than the 25 percent, if you can't. Uh, let's try to get you a duplex, right? Get you some more uh, rental checks coming in per mortgage. And then we should just work to get you through your first nine mortgages. And I don't have any issue with it being the C-class stuff. I think going Section 8 is great for the C-class stuff because it takes the level of unpredictability out of the equation, right? The biggest issue with these properties is when you don't get the rent, then you got to evict people. Now you're missing rent. Now you're paying money for evictions. Then you're paying us to come in and fix your property. And then every once in a while, people will break into the property. It's not like you got to carry a gun in this neighborhood or anything. But, dude, it's C-Class Investing. Y'all know the gig. Check out the Tennis from Hell show if you don't know the gig, right? So Section 8, in my opinion, really streamlines a lot of stuff. It makes things a lot easier for investors. And, you know, I, I see no problem hooking up with the... Uh, you know, C-class rentals and just rolling it. I mean, that's the majority of the Holton Wise portfolio and we've done very well with it, right? But I would definitely recommend sticking to the Section 8 stuff, exhausting those nine mortgages plus the one you own on your house that you live in. And then after that, you know, then we could reevaluate where you want to go with your business. Do you want to get into more commercial type investments like bigger apartment buildings? Uh, I would say that would probably be the route I would go before going to like a higher end neighborhood. So that's my thoughts on that. Uh, Denny, let my team know if you want us to write up the offer for you on this particular property. Uh, you've got this in a private email. So uh, we'll go from there. Everybody else who's watching Denny's show, just so you know, uh, Denny saw this video a while ago, probably a couple months ago. I don't release these shows publicly on Holton Wise TV till after the dust has settled. So if you're watching this, no, you cannot buy this particular property. No, it's not available for sale. This was just for Denny, and he is a couple months ahead of the curve as far as you guys are concerned. If you want to work with me and my team like that again, 
HoldenWise.com, property search for sale tab, MLS search and analysis show, order a package today. That's all I've got, folks. As always, I'm James Wise of Holton Wise, and this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Discount Property Warehouse, founded by real estate visionary Robert Field, author of The Short-Term Retirement Program, is a complete turnkey solution for acquiring cash-flowing investment properties in Memphis, Tennessee. Our turnkey properties include a third-party home inspection, new HVAC with 10-year warranties, new dimensional roofs, competitive price-to-rent ratios, discounted property insurance, in-house property management, private financing, and much more. At Discount Property Warehouse, we have a staff of licensed agents standing by, ready to assist you with every aspect of the process. Call us today or visit us online at discountpropertywarehouse.com. RentTech Direct provides you with an easy-to-use yet robust platform for managing your properties, complete with its built-in reporting and accounting system that can be customized to fit your business. You can manage work orders and even accept them online from your tenants. You can also share work order details with tenants or owners if you wish. With RentTech Direct, you'll also fill your vacancies faster than ever with the built-in marketing tools. Just enter the details of your property and RentTech will automatically provide you with a professional online website as well as syndicate them to popular websites such as Zillow, Trulia, and Apartments.com to get your listing maximum exposure so it's rented fast. Over 50% of those living in the greater Memphis area rent their home. This fact combined with the high price to rent ratio is why Forbes rates Memphis, Tennessee as one of the top real estate investment markets in the country. Memphis Investment Properties and their sister property management company, Reedy & Company Realtors, are among the largest and most trusted turnkey operations in this market. With over 30 years in business, a portfolio consisting of more than 2,700 active rentals, and an impeccable track record renovating over 6,000 single-family homes, it's no surprise they are one of the most reputable turnkey operations in the United States. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content, including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.